Sign up to the Patreon now and get access to the full backlog of Patreon videos including how to make a Skyrim world map, how to make an online first person shooter, and a bunch more. Sign up and you get every single one with the download links provided instantly as soon as you join. Okay, so in this video we're going to be making a flying system and I'm going to be using the flying template as a good starting point for the whole project. So if you open up Unreal Engine, you'll get this screen and you want to just go new project, blueprint and then go flying template. You can call this whatever you want, click on create project and then we'll get right into it. Okay, so once you made this new project, you'll have uh, a real basic template type thing. You can fly around in this. It's actually pretty cool. And uh, so anyways, I basically do you know, video games and video game systems uh, for a job now. And I got an email from a guy who wanted me to make a system where there was lots of different like HUD and it looked like you were in a real helicopter or a real jet plane. And so I got to work and uh, he actually said that I can put this on the YouTube channel. So this is why you're seeing it here right now. Inside of the content folder, I'm just gonna set everything up. Basically the main thing we're doing to implement the system is just getting some UI done. So we're gonna make a new folder and I'm gonna call this UI. And inside of UI, we'll put a bunch of the files that we need for this game. Um, and these will be in the description. You can just download these. So drag and drop those in. They should be quite fast to import. And there you have it. That's all the like textures and different things that we'll be using during the project. Now, by default, the camera is set up to be in third person. So to fix that, you can uh, delete the spring arm. So drag the camera onto the plane mesh and delete the spring arm. And then you can sort of just move the camera into a spot where it sort of looks more first person. So like maybe something like that, tilt it forward a little bit. And you're pretty much good to go. You will get some errors when you delete the target arm. So if you go to target here, just click on that and just delete all of this begin play stuff. And now you should be able to compile just fine. So it's now time to make some HUD and pretty much this whole project is just hard, but there's so many different parts of it. We've got to make like a compass that shows us if we're facing south or west or whatever way we're facing. We've got to make a um, pitch orientation that tells us like how many degrees forward we're leaning and stuff like that. Uh, but I thought I'd start with one of the more simple things, which is just telling us the speed of our player. And we can also do the altitude as well. So inside of the UI folder, we're just going to make a user interface and widget blueprint. And uh, we'll call it UI in-game. And later on, we're going to display this in 3D space, which is going to make it look way cooler. So we'll open this up. And I'll start off with just showing the speed of the player. So we're going to take some text, drag it in here. Go to anchors. I'm going to anchor it to this side. I'm not going to talk too much about styling and things like that because the, um, the main focus of this video is just uh, how to make the system, how to program it. So I'm going to set the position to 0, 0. And on the X, we're going to align this. Actually, on the Y, we're going to align this, 0 0.5. And then I'm just going to move this over a bunch. I think I'll make it like 300 wide. And uh, the position X, we can like move it over 150. And I'm going to use the Roboto Light font. And we'll make it a green color, like so. And I'm just going to type out speed 1000 for now. We're going to replace this in a second. We're going to make it say whatever our current speed is, but I just want to hard, hard code it to say 1000. So we'll compile and save. And you know what? I'm picky, so we're going to click back on this and make sure it's 0, 1, 0, so that it's a real solid green color. Compile and save, and now it's time to put it on our plane. There's a bunch of ways you can do this, by the way, but the way that I'm going to do it is we're going to do this in 3D space. So I'll show you how to do that. What you want to do is come to the blueprints, flying pawn, and we're going to show the uh, thing in 3D space here. So what I'll do is I'll add a component, widget, and this, is, this allows us to show our user interface, but in 3D space, which is real cool. So click on widget. Move it out a little bit and select the in-game HUD as our widget class. And hopefully it'll show up. Oh, you can see it's backwards. So just rotate that around so it's facing the player. And now you need to scale this down. It's going to be way too big by default. So 
just give it a size of like 0.1 should be fine. And by default, it's also meant to display at a size of 1920 by 1080, so you want to change the draw size to be that size. And now you can see that the speed is there being displayed. Some of you might have noticed that in the demo video at the start, the HUD actually curls around the player. You can achieve this by going to the geometry mode and selecting cylinder. And that'll make it sort of curl around. It looks a lot cooler. And uh, also I got the scale wrong. It should be 0.05. We want to make this thing display real small. So at this point I think we should be good to go. You can see that the speed is right over there. Let's see if we can see our HUD. If I hit play, you can see speed. It's a little bit too far away from our player though. It doesn't look very good right now. Uh, so we'll go ahead and try to fix that up. I'm just going to go ahead and take my widget and just move it a bit closer to the screen. Or sorry, to the player. So let's try that now. Hit play. And you can see that speed's a little bit closer. What I'll do is I'll go back to my UI and I'm just going to move speed across a little bit more. So we'll go to size X or sorry, position X. And we're going to set that to be 300. So now it should be right on the edge of my screen when I'm in the game. There we go. You can see it sort of wraps around us. Pretty cool look. And so we're going to be using this for the rest of the HUD. So how do we get the speed to actually update and show the speed of our player? Well, to do this, we're going to go to speed. So just click on it. And under content text, there's this bind option. If you click on create binding, it'll create a new binding. So we're binding some sort of value to this text now. I'm going to click on get text zero and hit F2 to rename it. And we're going to call it get flight speed. So all we need to do is get the speed of the jet and then feed it into this text here. I'm going to drag up from here and type format text and we're going to type speed and then curly braces and inside of those I'm going to put speed. Format text is a really good way to format some text in whatever way you want. So you can see here it's asking for a speed pin. So what we're going to do is we're going to get the player pawn aka our aircraft. We're going to cast it into the flying pawn type right click and make it a pure cast because um, we know it's going to be the flying pawn. And then inside of there, there's a variable called uh, forward speed. So if you get the current forward speed, you can plug that into here. Compile, save, let's hit play and check it out. As I start to go faster, it's going to increase my speed. However, it has a bunch of decimal places after my speed. Um, and I'm going to get rid of those because I don't really like those. So if we go back to the HUD, Go back to our get flight speed function. Drag out and type in truncate. And then just uh, plug that in there. So that's going to get rid of all of those ugly looking decimal places for us. All right, so it's time to add the altitude text. Um, I've renamed this to speed text as well. I'd recommend just to keep things tidy that you name everything over here to a good name. You can hit F2 to rename stuff. Uh, so what I'm going to do is copy and paste the speed text, and now I have a new text that I can use for the altitude. I'm going to anchor this to the opposite side of the screen. We'll set the position x to be negative 300, and we'll set the y to be 0. I'm going to type in 1 for the x alignment, and then I'm going to align it over to the opposite side this time. I'm going to type in altitude. So what we need to do this time is we need to get the altitude of the plane. So we're going to make a new binding, and this one is going to be called get altitude. So to get the altitude, we just need to take the player and check how high they are up in the level. So same thing, we're going to just copy and paste to get the player, and we're going to get the actor location. We're going to break that apart, and we're going to take the Z value, because the Z value is the height of the player. So we'll, we'll use another format text here. So if we type in format text, I'm going to type alt or alt, whatever you want to call it. And inside of their brackets this time, we'll put alt. And drag out and use the truncate again to truncate this value off and plug that into the alt. And so now we should have the altitude of our player as well. 
as I get higher into the air, it's going to show us the altitude of our player. Now we do have one problem, which is that by default, Unreal measures uh, distances in centimeters, but we generally want to display the altitude in feet. Uh, I'll actually put a little FT after it so you know it's in feet. So to make something into feet, it's actually pretty simple. You just divide the centimeter value by 30.48, and that will convert the centimeters into feet for us. So just type in 30.48 into there. Compile, save, and if we hit play, we now have our altitude in feet. And I mean, feel free to convert this to meters or whatever you want. Okay, let's take care of the compass now. So I'm going to go to UI, right click on my compass texture, and we're going to create a material out of it. Typically when you create materials, you want to prefix them with the letter M. So I'm going to call this M underscore compass. And we're going to make a UI material. So if you go to the material domain, you can select user interface, and this just tells it that it's a UI material. And then under blend mode, we also want it to be translucent as well. Now, all that we need in our material is just the ability to pan the crosshair left and right. And by doing that, we can make a fully functional crosshair. So we're gonna take this value here and this value here and plug them into final color and opacity. And you'll see the whole uh, compass appear and so all we need to do is scroll this across, and we can do this using a texture coordinate. So right click and type in text coord. I think it's text coord. No, nope. you have to type the whole thing. Texture coordinate. Okay. Add. And we're going to add this to a float 2. So we're going to make a float 2. And we want to move it left and right, aka the x value. So we're going to make a scalar parameter and then plug this in here. And I'll call my scalar parameter pan because we're essentially using this parameter to pan the compass left and right. One more thing is that it'll be zoomed out way too far. So if you click on this and uh, set the U tiling to 0 0.25 because we essentially have uh, four directions, northeast, southwest. And if you divide one by four, you get 0 0.25. So this will make it display evenly essentially. And so now our material is all set up and ready to go. To add the compass to the HUD, simply drag in an image. Under the image down here, you should be able to select the uh, compass. So type in M underscore compass. And anchor it to the top like this. The position X is going to be 0. Position Y, 200. Size X is going to be 590. And the size Y is going to be 80. And we're going to align it 0 0.5 on the X so that it's in the middle. And that should be good. And as always, it's a good idea to give things a name. So I'm going to call this compass image. Okay, so I just gave my stuff a bunch of names. I forgot to name everything. So I've done that. And uh, so we're going to set up the compass now. The compass right now is just completely static. So what we want the compass to do is update depending on which direction we're facing. This is actually a little bit easier to do than you might think. So the way that we're going to do it is we'll open up our airplane and we're going to make a function inside of here that will return our rotation on the your axis. And we're going to get what is called a normalized rotation, which means that the rotation is a value between 0 and 1 instead of 0 and 360. So we'll go to functions, add a function. And we'll call this get normalized rotation your. Okay, and if you check this box, it says it's a pure value. We want to do that as well. So to get the rotation your is actually quite simple. We're going to start by getting the rotation of our spaceship or our jet or whatever you want to call it. So get actor rotation. Break this apart because we only care about the your value, the z value. So go ahead and break that apart. We're going to make a local variable as well, and I'm going to call this uh, plane rotation. You don't really have to do this, but I, I think it's nice to do. Call that float. And I'm going to set that value 
to the yaw, like that. So if the rotation of the plane is greater than or equal to zero, we are going to take the plane rotation, normalize it to range, and also a function needs to return a value which is the normalized rotation, so go to the outputs, add a new float, and we're going to call this rotation your. So right click and type in return to add a return node. We actually need two return nodes here. Plug that in there, connect that to there. Copy these and plug this one in here and this one in here. So the only difference is that if it's greater than or equal to zero, we're going to do zero to 360 up here. And down here, we're going to do negative 360. So that's the only difference. And now we're ready to use this with our HUD. OK, so now we need what's called a material instance dynamic. I'll explain this a little bit. So basically, if we open up the compass material, there's this parameter here called pan. However, to edit the value of pan while the game's running, we need a dynamic material instance. So let's make one of those. If we go into the UI in-game and go to the graph, I'm going to add a variable. I'm going to call this compass material. Whenever you're making a material instance dynamic, you can just call it compass MID or whatever it is in MID. And the variable type needs to be material instance dynamic. So go to the event graph here, and on construct, we're going to create a material instance dynamic. To do that, simply drag out and type in create dynamic material instance. In the return value, we're going to set that equal to the compass MID. So just hold alt, drag that on there, and the parent is going to be the compass material. So now we have something that we can actually change at runtime. All we're going to do is every single tick, we're going to calculate um, where the compass needs to go. So we're going to take our compass, control, drag out from that, and set scalar parameter value. If you remember, the value was called pan, so just type in pan. And to get the value of our rotation, you remember we made the get normalized rotation your. So what you want to do is get player pawn, cast it to our flying pawn, and then get normalized rotation your, and finally plug it into there. So let's try it out. Flying around and nothing's happening. Oh, uh, the reason nothing's happening is because we have our compass thing here. We actually need to tell it to use our dynamic material instance. So to do this, we want to drag in the compass image, hold control. You want to set the brush from material. And then plug in your compass MID like that. And there we go. We now have a compass that rotates with our player. It looks super nice too because of the fact that it's 3D, it kind of actually looks like it's rotating around you. So I really like that compass. And also, my bad, you want to tell it to use the brush um, in the begin play. Don't do it in the tick, because doing, th doing that every tick would probably be quite expensive. For the next step, you'll need to add two new functions. So we have the get normalized rotation your, but you also want pitch and roll as well. So just add these functions, you can hit control W to duplicate them. And the only difference is that with the pitch one, we use the pitch node instead of the your node. And for the roll one, we just use that instead of the your. There is one difference is that one of my textures is a bit messed up. So you want to take this pitch pin here and then add 45 to it just so that the texture works. This isn't really good practice. You shouldn't do this in a real game, but it's an easy way to fix the texture. To make the pitch orientation, what we need to do is go to UI. We're going to duplicate the compass because the pitch orientation is actually really similar to the compass. If you don't know what the pitch orientation is, you'll see in a sec. So we'll call this pitch orientation.
for the texture, select the pitch orientation texture, and then you just want to plug the pan into the Y instead this time. So what the pitch orientation is, is it's going to tell us the angle that we're on uh, currently. If we go to the texture coordinate as well, change that to 1, and change this value to 0 0.25. So this is going to tell us the angle that we are on the pitch axis. So I'm going to save this now, and let's set this up. So we set this up using pretty much the exact same method that we did with the compass. Okay, so to set up the pitch orientation, we'll drag in a image. We're going to anchor it to the center of the screen and set its position to be 0, 0. The size X is going to be 450, 350, and then the alignment needs to be 0 0.5, 0 0.5. Now we can use our pitch orientation material by typing in pitch and selecting the pitch orientation, and there it is there. So we need to update this in the exact same way that we did for our compass, and I'll show you how to do that. Go to the graph, hold Control w to duplicate the compass MID, and we're going to call this one, you guessed it, pitch orientation MID. And also, yet again, I forgot to rename it, so we'll click on that, and I'm going to call this pitch orientation image. Compile save. And so we're just going to pretty much do the exact same thing. We'll use this node to create a dynamic material instance. We need to make sure that the parent is the pitch orientation material. Save that value in there. And then set the pitch orientation image. to the value. There we have it. And now we need to update this every single tick, and luckily we have those functions that do it for us. So, what we're going to do is we're going to take our pitch orientation MID, set scalar, and again that value hasn't changed, it's just pan. And we're going to set the value, what we need to do, it's a little bit different this time, we're going to get the normalized rotation pitch, and we need to invert it. Um, otherwise, it's gonna go, it's gonna basically go the wrong way. So to invert it, all we do is take one away from it, and then um, use the abs function on it. So what this is essentially saying is, if this value is 0 0.3, make it 0 0.7, or if it's 0 0.6, make it 0 0.4. So we're just inverting it, if that makes sense. So that should be good to go now. I'll just make sure. Yep, that seems fine. Uh, the last thing we need to do is make it roll with us, because right now it won't roll with us, if that makes sense. I'll, I'll show you in the game. You can see that it, ro it uh, rotates as I look up and down, but when I pan to the right, you can see that it follows us. Now, in most uh, flight simulators, it will actually stay level with the ground, if that makes sense. If you don't know what I mean, uh, I'll show you in a sec. So. I'm going to come back into our UI here, and all we need to do is use our get normalized rotation roll, and now what we're going to do is multiply this by 360 because it's a, the thing is this is a normalized value, right, um, which means it's 0 to 1, however since we're rotating the image that value actually needs 0 to 360, which is kind of stupid, but I don't know, whatever. So um, we're going to multiply it by 0 to 360, and then again, we're going to invert it, otherwise it will go the wrong way. So take 360 away from it, use the abs function, and that's just going to invert that value. And now what we can do to rotate it is to take the pitch orientation image and use the set render angle function. So what we're doing is we're simply just keeping the pitch orientation image level with the ground. You'll see this now. So check this out. As I rotate, notice that the image rotates to stay parallel to the ground. It's actually pretty cool. So there you have it. It's actually starting to come together quite well now.
Okay, now I want to implement the enemy highlighting system. So whenever we see an enemy in the distance, there will be like this red triangle around them. And it will kind of like, it just looks cool for a like jet HUD type thing. Um, but one thing about this is I'm going to use the HUD class to do this. The reason I'm doing the HUD class to do this is because inside the HUD class you get access to this function called, uh, I believe it's called draw texture or something like that. And it's just perfect for what we want to do. So I'm going to go ahead and right click blueprint, type in HUD. And I'm going to call this, uh, we'll go with flying HUD. And now you can simply go to your game mode and select flying HUD to be your HUD class. So flying HUD compile and save and now it's using a new flying HUD so to start drawing some HUD to the screen using the HUD class all you have to do is um, implement the event called receive draw HUD so right click type in receive and add the event receive draw HUD all we need to do is get all the enemy actors and then we can uh, loop through them and add triangles to them so what we want to do is right click make a new blueprint class that is an actor and we're going to call it enemy. Inside of enemy, I'm going to open that up and we'll add a component, static mesh. And you can add whatever you want to your enemy, like you can make him an actual humanoid figure or whatever you want, but I'm just going to keep things simple and I'll just add a cylinder to represent the enemy. So cylinder. Uh, why isn't that appearing? Cylinder, where are you? Oh, <laughs> I was inside of it. Drag that onto the scene root and compile and save, and now we have a cylinder. So I'm going to just chuck this throughout the level. Feel free to put as many or as little as you want on your level. I'm just going to put a few down. So open up the HUD class now, and now we're going to work on actually getting these uh, enemy markers to show up. So every time that HUD is drawn to the screen, we're going to get all the enemies in the level. So get all actors of class. And type in enemy. So this is going to get all of the enemies that are in the level. What we want to do is loop through each enemy and draw a marker. So just type, drag out and type in for each. And we're adding a for each loop. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to take the location of the enemy. So get actor location. And we're going to project world to screen. This is going to take the enemy's location in the world and then convert it to some coordinates on my actual screen. For the player, just type in player owner. Okay. So what we're going to do is we're going to check if that worked. So if the um, enemy's not on our screen, that's going to fail. So we need to check if it's actually on our screen or not. If it is on our screen, we're going to draw the texture to the screen. So draw a texture and you want to draw the uh, enemy indicator texture to the screen. So under texture, enemy indicator is the one you want. And the screen X and screen Y are a bit weird. Because the enemy indicator is 30 by 30, we need to take 15 off these values so that it is completely centered on the enemy. If you don't do this, it'll kind of be a little bit off to the left, which isn't a very good look. So plug that in there. The width and the height is just going to be 30 by 30. The texture U and V, 1, 1, 1, 1. So all the rest of them are just going to be 1s. Alright. Well, I guess it's tr time to try it out. So let's hit play. And there you have it. All of the enemies will have these um, triangles on them. And it doesn't matter how far away you get from the enemies, the triangles will always stay the same size, which is 30. Which is a good thing. It can actually be a really bad look if they're changing sizes and things like that. Doesn't look very nice in the final game. Just copy the properties I've got here. Negative 180, 40, 350, and 1 and 0 0.5 for the alignment. For the image, you want to choose scroll lines and then set the image size uh, accordingly. As long as you copy everything here, you should have a scroll line on the left side. And then we can just copy and paste that. And I'm going to call this one Alt Increase Bar because these bars are going to denote our speed and our altitude going upwards. So
so zero zero uh, this is going to be something like negative one and we're going to move it across in this direction and I believe that's going to be 180 no uh, I think actually yeah we need to compensate for the size so I think it's one might be 140 yeah that looks good yeah there we go okay so now we have the uh, the bars on the side so if I hit play there we go there's our bars I also figured that the text here was a little bit kind of incorrectly placed so I just changed the position X to be negative 400 and 400 over here just to move them a little bit more towards the center so one feature that I didn't mention is that these scroll lines here are actually meant to scroll up and down depending on whether your altitude is ascending or you know going up or down or whether your speed is going up and down as well so what we're going to do is we will go to scroll lines and in fact we're going to duplicate the pitch orientation one and just rename it to m underscore scroll lines so what you want to do is plug get rid of all this stuff in fact you can keep this part here and drag up from uvs and make a panner a panner is a node that will pan a material in a direction that you give it. So plug that in there. And change, click on the texture sample and change this to scroll lines. So if, by modifying the value of pan, we can make the um, bar pan up or down. So for example, if I put in 0 0.5, you can see that it will go up. Now, in my opinion, it pans a little bit too fast, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to divide this value here by 10, just to make it pan a little bit more slowly. So we'll go ahead and give it that value, 10. Okay. So now this is ready to actually be used in our HUD. So we're back in the HUD now, and let's implement these bars so that they scroll up and down. So I'm going to come to the graph. Add two new MID variables. We're going to add a speed bar MID and we're going to add a alt bar MID these two bars are going to be the ones that scroll so again we need our create material instance node we're going to go ahead and type in scroll lines store that in there and then just do that again except this time we're going to store it in the alt bar and you want to tell your speed increase bar to set brush and set the brush to that dynamic material that we made. And then once again, we just do that a second time with the alt increase bar. So, whoops, <clears throat> put that in there, set the brush from material. And there we go. At this point, we need to add two new variables. These are both going to be floats. The first one is going to be called speed last tick. And hit control W to duplicate. And then we're going to make one more, which is called alt last tick. And that just stores the um, altitude of your last tick. Okay, so what we need to do now is update these values at altitude and our speed. So what we're going to do is we're going to set the, we're going to take the speed bar MID and we're going to set the scalar parameter value, which is, I believe I just called it pan. And we want to do the same for the alt bar as well. And so these are going to raise or drop depending on whether we're declining or um, going up with these values. So I'm going to use pan for the parameter names. And what I'm going to do, I'm going to reroute here, otherwise it'll get a bit messy. So I'm going to take my character, add a reroute node, and I'll add another reroute node down here. And so what we're going to do is we're going to take, we're going to get the forward speed. So get forward speed. And then we're going to take that off the speed last tick. So take speed last tick and take that away from that and plug that in there 
And then finally, we, we're going to set speed last tick to that current forward speed after we've used it. And so this way we always have, um, we always keep track of what the speed was last tick. So if I try this out, yeah, when I speed up, this bar goes upwards, and when I start to slow down, this bar actually goes downwards. So we'll do the same thing for the alt as well. So if I open my HUD back up, come back in here, I'm going to do the exact same thing. So we're going to take the... Um, we're going to take the velocity, which is, or we're going to take the the height. So I figure how to do this. I think it's get actor location, and then you just break the you break the vector and you take the z value. So the z value we're going to take this away from whatever the alt was last tick, and then we're going to set alt last tick to this value here. Okay. And then this goes in here. So hopefully this will now work. Yep. You can see that the bars will now update to reflect whether we're climbing or falling in altitude or whatever's going on there. All right, guys, that's going to be it for this tutorial. One last tip I can give you that really improves the look of your game before I go is you can tilt the HUD back now, and it looks really nice. And especially if you actually manage to get your hands on a really nice fighter jet model, you can position the camera so that it's inside the cockpit of the plane, and then have the cylinder so that it wraps around the cockpit, and it, it's a really nice effect. So, an example of this, although we don't have like a nice jet plane model, is you simply just take your hard widget, and then just rotate it back so that it kind of... It's not the best on this, but it kind of gives you the impression that you're inside of a cockpit which is a really nice look. The more that you tilt it back, the more of that impression that you get. I'll, I'll try to sort of rotate it a little bit more. Also, because this is a 3D HUD and there's a cross here, you need to make sure that you're centering it up with the center of the camera. Like right now, if I was to shoot a bullet, um, it probably wouldn't go straight, right? It probably wouldn't go in the direction that my cross here is pointing in. So you need to take care and make sure that you're doing that. I'll show you if you... Um, go into the viewport, you can edit the location of the widget and you can use this um, viewport thing over here to see if it's all centered up. So you can see I can sort of move it and make sure it's in the center. And if I do something like that and now hit play, you can see it's a lot uh, more centered. So there's a quick tip for getting it all lined up and making it a little bit more immersive. But anyways, that's probably going to be it for this video. I'll see you guys in the next one.